introduce ourselves in the film. So I'll just press play without further ado. Hi, welcome to this webinar. Um, the subject is supporting others to make art at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. And we've, we've gone, gone for a top five tips that we'll try and convey to you as uh, succinctly as we can over the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, just to introduce ourselves quickly, uh, my name is Chris Peckham. I work as an art therapist for Nelft in the London Borough of Havering and Redbridge in the Community Learning Disability Teams. And uh, um, I'm a painter in my spare time as well. And next to me, I have... Hi, I'm Sally Ann Fisher. I work for Nelft in Waltham Forest and Barking and Dagenham Community Learning Disability Teams and also on Moor Wards at um, Good Mays Hospital. And in my spare time, I make things using clay. Okay. Um, so we've kind of we tried to boil, boil this subject down into five main headings uh, which I will sort of briefly run through so the one is just thinking about the individual and the mark they make and just valuing them in terms of in terms of their unique individuality uh, we're looking at the different settings in which people make art there's the setup the materials that, that we provide and that, that and so forth the the individual's creative process, what happens when we start, the person starts making art and how we, how we engage with them. And finally, what happens to the art after it's, after it's finished? What's, what happens next? Um, so those are five things. We're going to have an image up which kind of relates to some of these points. And, it's, and uh, I'm just going to get this up on the screen. So we'll, we'll have this up as we're, as we're talking. Um, this is an image uh, painted by a lady I, I worked with a number of years ago who kindly offered for it to be shared in, when we do kind of training workshops and stuff. Um, the reason I picked it was, I mean, we were talking about the idea of in, the individual mark and how that's unique to that person. And this lady's pictures were made almost entirely out of the letter V, which happened to be a, her initial, which she, was one thing she felt confident to draw herself. And um, she... Um, her images were just, were just, literally just these, but just hundreds of them often built up in, in such an expressive and colourful way, kind of full of energy and different materials, uh, different, different colours, different lines in different directions. And I always, what I always remember was I saw her in a group and at the end of the group one week, we were all sort of looking at each other's work and I asked her if there's anything she wanted to say about her picture. And she just looked round at the group and smiled and just said, this is me. And it was, it was just a sort of so a simple, profound statement. And that was just what she was wanting to convey. This was her, this was her personality that she'd made through these, these well, you know, basically a very simple mark, but just, just with such individual expression, I think. Um, we've, we've often um, noted as well, Chris, haven't we, that there's something in the shape of a V that's very similar to the very affirmative tick yeah yeah as well yeah just that positive energy it had for her um so she she built this image up over time over over what sort of time period did she make this one image this was actually it was a folder it was actually on the outside of a folder that she had to keep her work in which she chose preferred to work on the folder rather than the content so this was done over <coughs> over a number of weeks actually so it was kind of layered sometimes she changed the direction of the that which she was working on so the, the lines would change direction but it was it was kind of really built up over a period of time um, it, it does seem quite um pertinent that she did that on the outside of the folder when all the work inside the folder was quite private and quite um away from view but this was yeah. very public um yeah um, absolutely yeah 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 <laughs> So yeah, we, so we were, I suppose we were talking about the different settings. Obviously, this I say this image was made by a lady in a, in a group, a small group setting with maybe four or five other people that she was uh, was used to knowing. But yeah, we, it's I suppose important to recognise the preferences people may have for making art, and that may vary from making art alone and in private, uh, making art in a group setting with other people, but may, maybe having someone there while they're making art and just witnessing that and just be 
being attentive and supportive of the process. So it can really vary, I think, and I suppose it's just being aware of people's preferences around that and recognising how that may vary. About maybe different, different people, maybe this one person may, may enjoy different things at different times as well. Sorry, Sally. You know. um, no, I, I was just thinking of a lady that I'm working with actually at the moment. Um, prior to lockdown, um, I would visit her at home each week. And for her, it was really important that I brought paper to the appointment and she would often engage with me in a conversation but wouldn't um, make art while I was there but then when I had gone and when her uh, mother had gone to bed that's when she would often get her paper out and her pens and make art by herself um, quite late at night and then in, in the morning her mum would come downstairs and there'd be images everywhere and then she would share those images with me when I visited the next week and we would uh, talk about her images. But she never would or never has made art in my presence, maybe one time. Mm. But, um, so she, she knows very well that it's a very private um, process for her, sitting yeah, down yeah. In, the, in the kitchen at night by herself. That's the time when she chooses to make art. She made that very clear. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it can really vary. So sometimes, actually, yeah, just the actual doing of it just needs to be something that is private. And then there's a point where you think that's okay. I'm ready to show it to other people. Whereas others, it's the whole thing just being with someone while it's being made, maybe really, really important. Yeah. Or, or um, even just being having someone there as an observer. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think when we've done groups. There's something about the fact, even if you're not really noticing what other people are doing. It's the fact that other people have put aside everything else and are just saying, this is a time that we value making art above everything else. Mm. I'm feeling like that's okay. So it's kind of normalising it a bit because art can sometimes be a bit sort of an odd, indulgent thing to do when there's not so much else to be doing in life. So actually having just other people doing it at the same time can be can really kind of hold a, a nice, comfortable space that feels mm. all right. To do and, that, and then yeah. within that as well, it's really interesting how people influence each other, isn't it? In the images yeah. that they, they make, yeah. and yeah. even through the sound of of materials on the page, how that yeah. how that will influence the energy of somebody else's picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and I think oh, the other thing I was thinking, the other quick thing on that subject was around also how people's individual choices about making art can vary. So for some people, having a structure of thinking, right, I have an hour on a Wednesday morning, 11 o'clock, that's when I do my art making, mm -hmm. and people will help just be around to support me with that, and it's part of my, it's part of my kind of schedule of things that's important to me. That, for some people, that's, that can be really kind of critical, whereas for others, it may be more of a just... When they, it's, take they can... Yeah, just when the, when it feels right, the time is right. If I feel like I want to make smart, I can even tell someone who can get stuff ready for me or I know where it is and I can just go and get it for myself. So, again, it's another thing to, to bear in mind in terms of how how individual those choices can be, but how how really important. Yeah, th that is really important because if, if there is a structured time set by the system, we're going to do art at 11 o'clock on a Wednesday morning, um, that's not always going to sue either, is it? No, no. You, you can't, yeah. you can't feel creative on on, on command. No, no. So yeah, it doesn't happen to order, does it? Really, no, no. Right. No. Okay, moving on. So next yeah. week, point number three, which I suppose thinking about the setup, no, yeah. um, materials we have, and I think we're just thinking about you know often the situations you're working in, working at home. Um, limited time and resources and I think it's often just making the most of what we have whether that's just a small notebook and a biro or whether there's space and time to get out paints and you know work on a large painting on you know on an easel or something it's it's just recognizing what is realistic within that time and just thinking that's fine that's what we can do let's just make the most of that it doesn't matter what how simple it is you can still you know just a tiny drawing or a scrap of paper with a with a biro can be as can be as valuable as as a you know a large scale painting or or having a you know a potter's wheel set up or something in the room. Um, and I think one of the important things about setting up is 
for example, if you are painting, and in which case you would need a pot of water and get the brushes from the cupboard and the paints and pour the paints into a palette or onto a plate, whatever you're using. But that setting up and the tidying up afterwards is as important to the process of creating as actually making the artwork itself. And Mm. it's really important that a person can be facilitated with varying levels of support that's, that's needed to do that themselves. And that, that might take a really substantial time, but that's okay because that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think there's the thing around this being the, 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 the opportunity for independence and, and, and autonomy, yes, within that process, just making the most of all those opportunities. Mm. Yeah, so rather than it's just pouring out a few colours onto the palette, just getting the person to just line the paint bottles up, saying which ones do you want? And you'll see if the person's able to do that themselves and decide where, how they want the paint arranged on the palette or the plate or whatever you're using, all those things are just just individual choices that, you know, that, that are really important, I think. And, and I, I think... Like, I think also it's important to take some positive risks um, because there might be an assumption that, oh, maybe this person, you know, may not be able to pour his own paints or her own paints into the palette, but, but don't make that assumption. Just just let, let them, let them have a go. And there's a, there may be a risk that paint might fall on the table or the palette may overflow, but take the risk and, and, and find out. And you may be surprised. Uh, we're thinking also about, I suppose, about kind of what's kind of manageable in the time. And, and there are some things where you, that some really valuable materials, we discover things like these acrylic paint sticks that are, that are on the market now, which are kind of like a print stick, but they allowed you to kind of paint and um, do quite broad areas of colour, a bit like painting, but in a much more controlled, less messy way, which are quite easy just to put the cap on and put away quickly if you don't have time to set up painting. So it's just sometimes products like these can really help in a, where you've got limit, limited time and space. Maybe it's like you're working on the dining table and you've got to clear stuff up, and get ready for a meal and you can't leave stuff out kind of for the long term. But I think we were kind of thinking about sometimes the value of, of making a mess can be really good, just a playfulness about that. But also when you're supporting someone, just being, I suppose, just making just preparation in terms of discovering services and and just being ready. That So you kind of feel relaxed with that and, and you can kind of communicate to the person and help them to feel that that is something playful and you're not thinking, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that, you're going to make a mess on the carpet. You know, so you know what's kind of what's manageable within the setting you've got and having time to, to clear up afterwards. Mm. And also having a break midway or having a cup of tea. Oh, yeah. Halfway through and yeah. sitting back and look at, looking at your picture, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Which um, actually brings on, we're talking a bit about the process. That was the other thing, number, number four, the, the actual individual process. And I guess, again, it's, a lot of it just comes down to they're not necessarily being a right way to do art, but it's also so infinitely variable according to the person and the situation they're in. Um, and, and just being okay with that, really. That's, you know, if someone makes, if you have half, half an hour to make art, it's not essential the person has to just be working continually for that time. It may take someone a bit of time just to get going, just to, sit, just to sit with the paper and think what is it they want to do and just to get that confidence to get going maybe someone starts has a burst of activity and then just needs to get up and go for a walk and come back have a stretch which i don't know is when i'm making art is really important i do i work concentrate for a while that i need to just to stop and get away from it maybe stand back and look at it and and come back again so it's, it's not a kind of linear thing it's just very yeah it's just it's it's just recognizing that's that's kind of fine that's okay and sometimes i think for some people, it may be just a five minutes of, of focused activity, maybe just enough for a day. And rather than just trying to push it, so I'll do a bit more, that if they've done something that's really meaningful and that's it, then that's fine. Again, they, and it, it may and be it's something come from them. Yeah, yeah, something that's come from someone's own initiative, that's something they've wanted to do. That's, that's often the most valuable thing just to hold on to. 
rather than just feel like they've done it just because we've hassled them into doing it and badgered them on you just can't keep going another 10 minutes so, yeah. um, I, I, no. I think that's um, a really valuable point Chris as well uh, uh, thinking about what what we invest of ourselves when we make art and and how what a big disclosure um putting a very personal expression onto a piece of paper is and it, it's kind of you have to allow yourself to be vulnerable and anybody who is brave enough to make art that's that's a real sort of a real bravery isn't it to, mm. to do that because it's making yourself vulnerable and exposed to people's comments and criticisms um potentially and so yeah it takes a lot of bravery i think mm. to make an image in someone's presence or amongst others yeah i've had yeah i remember a chap who made art and he had his paint bottles arranged around the picture so i couldn't see it while i was making he should sort of tentatively now he's looking at it once he was finished but you know and it's important just to respect that that was his that made it kind of space comfortable for him. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, yeah, so we're just thinking about that process again. So, you know, for some, like we were saying, it may be about just have it, taking time to get going, taking a break, maybe just working for a brief spell. And it may be also just about having the opportunity to kind of come back to something like this, the image we have here. Um, this was worked on over a number of sessions. This lady chose to come back to this image and kind of build up those layers. So maybe someone maybe only just work on for a brief amount of time each time, but they may value the opportunity to continue with that and build on it. And the sense of often there can be a strong sense of accomplishment of, of just building on building up layers of color and, um, yeah, I remember a lady I'd worked with who she did paintings each week and sort of stacked them on top of each other. So it, over time, she actually had a physical mound of paintings where it actually became almost like a solid object. But there was something for her that was really important about that as a thing in itself. Mm. It became just, a, you know, it was, it was actually an object. It was maybe, you know, how many paintings, but that was something that she saw as a rec recognition about something she'd accomplished over time as well. Mm. Um, I just also want to mention um, a client I worked with. It, 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 again, he worked on the same image over a number of weeks. Um, but he actually started off in the first few weeks drawing an image. He was, he was in the image. He was one of the characters he drew into the image. And he drew um, a, a crime scene, actually. And he actually drew himself holding a weapon. <clears throat> And by the time he stepped back to, to look at the image, he realised that he had drawn himself into a, into a corner, really, and was really disappointed that now he, he was thinking about the consequences now that he had got himself into this situation. And, it, and, and a beautiful thing about art making and the, the time that we have to sit back and reflect <laughs> we can actually make changes to, to the story that we've told. Mm -hmm. And he managed to do that. He um, rubbed out certain things within the picture and he changed the story. He sort of changed his own script and created something much more positive where in the end he, he became the hero, the hero. And, you know, everybody around him hailed him as this, this great hero in this crime scene. So, and at the end of that, he felt extremely positive and that he had done the right thing and he, he got so much out of that. And that's one of the beautiful things about art and telling stories through art that we can, you know, imagine other um, scenarios are better, yeah. are, better ver are better versions of ourselves almost. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, is that, yeah, pictures can tell stories i was very i was thinking about that there came another point, point came to my head that i wanted to mention was i suppose just of recognizing that pictures don't have to don't have to be a picture of something recognizable sometimes i think maybe there can be a pressure i'm just thinking oh well you know draw a house draw us a nice flower a picture of something that looks like something and and you know obviously this in within the art world there's great variations of art between representation and abstract art um but you know just but recognizing that say for this image here it's okay it, it's it's lines and color and pattern but that may represent something for that person maybe about the energy that's in it about like their sense of identity so 
An image can represent something without actually literally having to look like a, a recognizable image of a drawing or painting of a thing that we know. Um, and I think, what was I going to say? I, I, think, I, guess, I guess as an outsider, as the person who didn't make the artwork as well, when we look at the image, we can sort of share how that image makes us feel rather than commenting on the content because that's a very personal thing that we can't know, but we yes. can sort of acknowledge oh, yes. how the image makes yeah. us feel. Yeah. Which is really uh, important and, you know, quite validating. Yeah. So we're just owning that yeah. rather than telling the person what we think their image is about. Because often, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Often uh, images are just, it's about a mood. It's something you don't, you don't actually... You might not necessarily know how to put it into words. It's, that's why we have images, because they convey things about our experience that necessarily we can't always label a word to. So that's, it's not always important that it is. You can say, what is it? It doesn't have matter. It's, it's just mm. what it is. It's, that, it's whatever that mood was that was in those colours and those, that energy. You know, same as a, as a piece of music may not be instantly labelled. You can mm. instantly be able to pin a label on it. And then, and then it always also has that function that that if somebody does draw a very delightful, beautiful image of a field of poppies, and it's it's or a field of wildflowers, that 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 thing that somebody is drawing might be representing something that they're not experiencing in their own lives right now, uh -huh. and it's, it's sort of almost. <clears throat> counterbalancing um some grief or some sadness by by representing mm -hmm. a very joyful happy scene so mm -hmm. so, so a, I, I suppose a, a joyful picture of flowers could mean that someone is feeling very joyful and happy but it also could mean that's what's missing um, yeah. in their yeah. lives right now mm -hmm. so so not to make assumptions about what the content of an image might mean. Yeah, I guess I guess that kind of comes into maybe clicks takes us into the point number five of what is done with the art. And I guess part of that once is about looking at it, maybe and valuing, encouraging people to to look at the art they've made and just look at it with them and not necessarily feel that you have to kind of label it and say what it is but like you say you may just say honestly what your response is to it how you feel what interests you about it and give this person time sometimes just to stop and really look at it sometimes there's a lot that can come with just stopping and looking at an image when you're in the middle of doing it when you make even when you're making it yourself i think it's so different for sometimes just stopping you know put it up on the wall just and just have that distance from it and sometimes the whole relationship between that changes i mean in groups we often encourage uh, clients in groups just to, at the end just to stop and look at look at work and have that just have that distance and just time to, to look at it and get so, and so much can be gained from the looking as well as the creating together it's making me think of another client of yours um chris uh who drew an image of how how she was feeling when she was at a party Oh, and, yeah. and it yeah. was that sense of isolation that she was experiencing that, that she yeah. wasn't able to put words to and she shocked herself by the image yeah. that she drew and then yeah. subsequently took it to show her doctor and, mm. and her doctor was able to understand some, something of that experience. Yes, um, I've got that image lined up for our next webinar actually, so we'll come back to oh, that. Have you? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> um, I suppose the other thing just with the, to what it's done with the art, I suppose it's also... Thinking about again is is thinking what the person's choices, the choices there are, just maybe to keep it somewhere, keeping work safe, the opportunity to recognise it's valued, kept in a folder or maybe it's in a sketchbook somewhere safe, or whether it, the person prefers to have it up on the wall, whether they want to give it as a gift to someone else, so it may take on an important meaning in terms of something that's shared. And, and uh, one of my first experiences that perhaps got me into art therapy was working in a residential school for children with physical disabilities and I worked with a girl who had um, uh, uh, cerebral palsy and had very little control of her, her limbs but she was able to paint with a, like a, a brush attached to a helmet and did these amazing kind of rainbow pictures where just kind of doing a stretching motion with her head and it was something she'd she had so little opportunity to kind of create anything do anything independently this was something about herself that she could she could do with, a, with apart from me just holding the pots and saying what colours do you want she was these was her paintings and 
and it was so important for her that she was able to give them as for, to her family often when there were birthdays or Christmas. It was something, you know, something individual that she had some autonomy over. Um, mm. uh, I've got I've got a client um, who I'm meeting via Zoom throughout lockdown. We've been meeting each week. And each week she's making a card for a family member and then sending an image through her phone to them. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's been, become a really important way of her keeping contact with her family and sharing um, yes. part of herself. And I guess, yeah, and I guess any times it's so, it's so much easier to share images, isn't it, through, through social media and, and now Zoom and everything. We can, you know, it's, it's done in an instant, yeah, yeah. How are we doing for time? Um, I think we've probably we yeah. on long enough for now, so we'll we give everyone a break and come back for <laughs> webinar number two. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.